All right, all right. We are here. We are looking at Ugo Nwadike's website. I promised I would uh, take a look at this um, blog post, give you some uh, more updates, some more ideas for um, making the content um, not necessarily better, just more interesting to readers. So let's start. Let's just dive in, right? First things first. Um, what do you think about when you see, when you see this site right now? Is there is there anything that's that's um, grabbing your attention? For me, the answer is no. It's not that it's bad, but there's nothing attention grabbing. What I try to do with most of my websites or most of my blog posts is an image, right? Always lead with an image uh, because that will grab attention. You can set the tone. You can uh, um, you know arouse any kind of feelings that you want with a with a cool picture. So I I go to this place called this is it right here. It's called canstockphoto.com. The the images are like two bucks a piece. They have a whole bunch of different ones that are some that are pretty cool, and I usually can find something there that I can use. All right, so that's number one. I would just put an image like right here, right up top in the middle. Um, and here I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I'll just do this one. So this is my website, right? Go to the blog here. Oh, uh, boom, right? So you can see uh, immediately image that draws your attention in, right? That's a picture of me with my video. Uh, again, video, but here we got another image, right? So, um, again, give something that's sort of visually appealing. People will like that. Number two, let me get back to your site here. Oh, number two is the headline. So the headline needs to be a question, right? It needs to be something that's going to appeal to the to your reader and draw them in. And your readers are your ideal clients. They're not other other attorneys. They're not anyone else except for somebody that needs your services. And uh, like we talked about with this specific post earlier, I would ask something like, um, "Is my business a commercial enterprise for E2 visa purposes?" That's easy. The reason is because that's the probably the exact question that someone's going to have if they are looking into this type of visa. And I don't know anything about immigration law or these visas, but that would be my question. Um, once you once you get then there, then you want to come down here. You you identify what a commercial enterprise is and what a commercial enterprise is not. But you want to use stories to sort of um, illustrate these examples, right? So um, a real and active business versus a speculative investment or passive investment. Well, I don't even know what that means. So what I would do is I would I would start up here um, with some, with a with a an intro linking back because I know what happened. This is a, a sort of a a definition from a previous post. So the first thing that you want to do is and let me back up. There's a specific kind of format that I like to do with these with all my blog posts generally. It's it's first intro, okay? So the introduction to the topic, to the content. That's a great place to link back to your other article. So you can say, you know, this is uh, in an earlier post I talked about commercial enterprises for E2 visa purposes. And and you can link back to the other post in that sentence. You know, here I wanted to talk specifically about what a commercial enterprise is because sometimes it can be difficult to figure out what that is, blah, 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 blah. Um, number two, the second thing I talk about is why. You know, why is this important? Why is it important to make sure that your um, uh, business is a commercial enterprise for these purposes? Next thing is what. Okay, this is where you would get into the what. What is a commercial enterprise? What is a commercial enterprise not? Um, then the how. Maybe a couple of ways that you can make what appears to be a non-commercial enterprise on its face into a commercial enterprise. Just a couple of suggestions, whether it be put people on the payroll or get a website, get business cards. I don't know what people what the what the authorities are looking for, but but you know, some suggestions for for ways that people can make what is a nonprofit business or a passive investment into a commercial enterprise. The the fifth thing that I'll talk about is what if, what ifs. These are objections, okay? So this is where you try to think about the question, the other sort of sub-questions that people would ask or the objections that people would have, the problems that people would have with your advice, and then you overcome those. Sometimes it's just one. Um, sometimes there's none. If there's none, then you, or if it's not appropriate for a specific post, then you just uh, don't put it in there, all right? And then the next thing would be the action step, right? And and that for us, that's a call to action. This is a weak, weak, weak call to action, Ugo. You need to fix this. 
I tip and, and the other thing is too, you want to break this up with headlines, right? You want to make this visually appealing and, and easy to uh, maneuver for people. So you want to guide them through this whole article. So at the top, I would write a headline here that says like, Hey, are you, um, uh, are you in need of an E2 visa? You know? And I would say we can help, you know? Uh, and I would say a little blurb about, about why you can help. Um, I would say, please contact our office, but you need to put your phone number here. You need to put your email address here. You need to put some kind of contact information here. And then under that, I always do a short bio in italics. So I would just say, you know, this says this was posted by you, but I would just say something like, you know, Ugo is uh, the, one of the preeminent uh, immigration attorneys in Miami, uh, blah, blah, blah. Say a couple things about yourself and that's good. Okay. And then the last thing that I would do, I would consider doing if I were you is adding the ability for people to leave comments and comment spam is a, is a huge problem and something that you're going to encounter no matter what you do as a, unless you just turn off comments like you, like you have, um, there's this thing called discuss or discus D I S Q U S is a pretty good con, uh, comment management, uh, plugin. It's free, I believe. Um, but you know, you want to get you, this is, this is, these are the kind of topics that you may get people actually talking about and asking uh, additional questions on. So you want to encourage that, uh, here in your post too. All right. So bottom line is, look, don't, don't, um, I, I think a lot of us, uh, put these up here because we feel like we just have to have something up here, but take the time, take a little extra time, make them entertaining, make them interesting, make them informative, make them educational and new clients will flock to you. All right. So that's it, Ugo. Take some time, redo this post and, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.